Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be ranking my top 10 current favorite eyeshadow palettes. I've actually never done a ranking video on my channel. And I got this idea from my good friend, Samantha March. We did a collab video about a week ago. And when we were brainstorming ideas of what type of video we wanted to do, Samantha recommended doing a ranking video because she does them a lot on her channel. We ended up going in a different direction with our collaboration video, but I still think that ranking products is a great idea and hopefully you will enjoy this video. So deciding how to rank these palettes was not easy because every single one you're gonna see here is a favorite, but as I mentioned in the very beginning, they're current favorites. If I had filmed this video four months ago or maybe if I would film it four months from now, the list and the order might be different because as we all know, new palettes are always coming out, but I think you're gonna find that most of these are oldies but goodies. And I think there's one or two new-ish palettes in here, but overall, these are palettes that I've used and loved for years. So without any further ado, let's start with my number 10 eyeshadow palette. So in the 10th spot is the ColourPop Blush Crush eyeshadow palette. This palette just really called to me when I saw it on the display at Ulta. I thought the shades were really, really soft and pretty. And ColourPop actually has some really good quality eyeshadows. I find them to be very pigmented and blendable. Of course, they're hit and miss, like with most brands. Sometimes there's a dud in the palette or in a formula. But that's something you're going to find across the board. Just so I don't say pigmented and blendable and creamy a million times. Just so you know, across the board, that's what I look for in an eyeshadow palette, one that I really fall in love with and find myself using over and over. And that's another thing. The criteria for this ranking were palettes that, number one, I think are excellent quality, number two, that I find myself reaching for the most often. And my third criteria was if I had to get rid of all of my other makeup, if I could only pick 10, which palettes would I keep? And this one comes in at number 10. Of course, the packaging is really travel friendly. And I think, especially if you have blue eyes or green eyes, these types of tones, these peachy tones, these plummy browns, they really look beautiful on green and hazel and blue eyes. Not that brown eyes couldn't wear this palette, but I just find that for me, it's really flattering to my eye color. So palette number nine is the Lorac Pro Palette number four. I consider myself to have a very neutral skin tone. I can wear both gold and silver jewelry. I can wear cool tones on my eyes. I can wear warm tones on my eyes. And I do often flip flop between warm looks and cool looks. When I want to do a cool look, this is one of the palettes that I reach for. I love the sort of silvery mauve shades that are in this palette. It has a great mix of shimmers and mattes. The browns are cool browns. So if you find that a lot of browns pull red or orange on you, not in this palette. Even the warm ginger, I don't find to be very warm at all, especially in comparison to other sort of transition shades that I've used in other palettes or like some popular MAC shades like um, Uninterrupted and um, Brown Script and Saddle. Those are all very popular crease shades or transition shades and I find them all to be a lot warmer than Warm Ginger. So you've got a nice variety of transition shades, you've got some beautiful shimmers, some deeper colors that you can line with or do a smoky eye look with. And this shade Candlelight is honestly one of my favorite sort of soft gold shimmers. And I believe Lorac has one of the best eyeshadow formulas on the market. I know I said I wasn't gonna use the terms pigmented and creamy and blendable and buttery over and over, but I can't not use those adjectives when talking about Lorac eyeshadows because they are, in my opinion, so good. Okay, palette number eight is the Too Faced Sweet Peach. Now, this right here is one of the palettes that I reach for when I do want to do a warm toned look. I love to use Puree and Summer Yum. I like 
white peach for a highlight under the brow bone. I don't find it to be like too stark white. It gives a nice brightness under the brow bone, but as I said, it's not like stark, harsh white. It's very soft. And this shade, Luscious, is beyond gorgeous. I was recently watching a video by the makeup artist Hindosh. If you're not following him or subscribe to him here on YouTube, you need to do that. I will put his name on the screen. He is an incredible makeup artist and he recently, well maybe it wasn't recent, I only recently watched it, but it was a tutorial of how he achieves his sort of signature makeup look on his models and he mentioned that this shade Luscious was one of his favorite shimmers of all time. It really does just smooth out the lid. Even if you have mature skin and maybe some loss of elasticity on the lid, you can pat this shade on with your finger and it's smoothing. It just does something unexplainable to the eyes. It makes them sparkle. And I think he said that he uses this palette just for this particular shade. And I find myself doing the same thing, reaching for this palette just to use this shade. Well, and the white peach and puree and summary on. All right, palette favorite number six is the first of two BH Cosmetics palettes I have in this countdown. This one is the Beautiful in Barcelona palette. Now I'm not gonna tell you that all BH Cosmetics eyeshadows are phenomenal because I've tried some others and they were not nearly as good as the formulation of these 16 color palettes. I realize that for some people packaging is minor, but to me, I love this kind of packaging. It is my favorite. You'll notice that about the Lorac Pro that I showed you, the Blush Crush. I like a palette that I can hold in my hand for one thing, that's not huge, that I can work right off of with a brush. I like the fact that if it drops on the floor, nothing's gonna shatter. And I don't know, I just, I'm just drawn. I'm looking here now at all of my favorites and most of them have this type of packaging. And let's get back to the colors in this palette. How? gorgeous are they. Look at that flamenco shade, Fiesta, Picasso, Azul. Now I know it appears that I have never used this Azul shade. That's because I haven't. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous, but if you're familiar with me and my videos and my makeup style, I'm not very colorful. I do need to branch out, but I like that it's there. <laughs> I like that it's available if I ever want to try it. But some of these other shades like Mediterranean and Flamenco, I have played around with, but most of the time I'm using Enchanting, Stone, Fiesta, La Rambla is another great under the brow shade or all over the lid shade to set your concealer if you use that as a primer or to set your eyeshadow primer. Exquisite is an exquisite soft shimmer. And I really love the combination of mattes and shimmers. That's another theme you're going to see here across the board. All of these palettes have that sort of combination because that is my go-to sort of makeup look, makeup style. I like to do a combination of mattes and shimmers. I pretty much always use some sort of shimmer on my lid. Once in a while I'll do an all matte look, but for the most part I like to pop a little bit of shimmer on the lid. So I like a palette that has a little bit of everything. Speaking of palettes that have everything, I wasn't certain if I should include this one in the countdown because it's not technically an eyeshadow palette, but everything contained in here can be used on the eyes as eyeshadow but you've also got blush, you've also got bronzer, you've also got highlighter. So let me tell you what it is. It is the Faces by Rob, Rob Glow book. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been raving about this set for months. I think I got it back in November. And as I mentioned, it contains a full-size bronzer, highlighter, dual highlighter, a full-size blush. And then there's also lip products. There's a lip pencil, and a lip gloss. Rob is another makeup artist that I follow, whose work I adore. I think he just makes all of his models look just so naturally beautiful. And he put this palette together to give everyone his Rob glow, which is his signature look. And he's done several tutorials on Instagram, on IGTV, where he's shown how to use this palette, but it's pretty simple. He either takes the bronzer shade or the blush shade all over the lid, and then uses one of these highlighter shades. I've been using the sort of darker shade, popping it right on my lid. 
And then I, because I have hooded downturn eyes, I like to do a little bit of a darker outer corner to lift up my eyes. So I'll reach for a dark brown from another palette to work the outer corners. But overall, you have a complete makeup look here. Eyes, cheeks, lips, highlighter. Unfortunately, I do not have a discount code or an affiliate code for you, but if you go to the Faces by Rob Cosmetics website and sign up to receive their emails, they'll let you know when they have their next special. He's actually done quite a few promotions since this palette launched, either 20% off or 30% off, and now you can also buy the lipstick and the liner separately, which I think is a great idea because why would you want to have to rebuy a whole palette if you run out of lip gloss or lip liner? Anyway, I'm obsessed with this thing. Ugh, I hate using that word, but I really am. It's just a great palette I know I can reach for, get a full look done with, and feel like I look really pretty and not overdone. Okay, I'm gonna kind of clump palette number five and four together because now that I'm looking at them, they're pretty similar. <laughs> I guess that's why I reach for them both a lot. Um, they're, they're slightly different. One of them is the Huda Beauty Topaz Obsessions Palette, and the other one is the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. Remember how I said earlier that sometimes I like to do cool looks and sometimes I like to do warm looks? Well, I would say that more often than not, I am wearing a warm tone look on my eyes. This is the palette I have on right now. I will admit that I've never once used this sort of mustardy shade up here in the corner, but if you have darker skin, I can see this being an amazing palette for you. I think I own about four or five of these Obsessions palettes. The smoky eye one, the mauve, the brown. I just think they're great. I think the formula is great. There are beautiful shimmers in here that can be used wet or dry, and I love the size. I love a small palette, which brings me to the mini nude. I waited so long to buy this palette. I kept seeing another makeup artist that I love and I've spoken about quite a lot, Emma Chen, <laughs> Emma Chen Artistry, and I watched her do tutorials with it, both on herself and on models, and it just seemed like a great staple palette to have. And it's the perfect size for keeping in your makeup bag or in your drawer at work. You can get a pretty polished day to night look so easily with this little palette. And if you've always wanted to try Natasha Denona eyeshadows, but her full size palettes were just way out of your budget, then I highly recommend trying one of the minis. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I have tried one or two other minis that I didn't think were that great, but this one is awesome. Okay, I just have three more palettes left to show you. Number three is the Sydney Grace Enduring Love Eyeshadow Palette. When I first received this palette and opened it up, I literally gasped. I just was blown away by the shade selection. When I swatched these shimmers, I was in awe. They were so buttery, so pigmented, I could not wait to use this palette, and I have been using it constantly. I've spoken about it in several videos. I love this stunning sort of khaki green shade called Diana. I mean, look at that. It is beautiful. I honestly cannot say enough good things about this palette. You can do a silvery, dark, smoky eye with this. You can do a vibrant sort of pinky purple look. You can do, you know, a neutral brown khaki. I mean, this takes you from day to night. It's just so versatile and uh, I could just go on and on, but I'm just gonna finish by saying I freaking love this. So you might be wondering if I love that palette so much, why wasn't it number one? What could possibly be better than how I just went off about that palette? Well, palette number two. I had to give this one a high ranking because it's been one that I've used consistently for, I wanna say a couple of years. I think it's been out for a couple of years now. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. Of all of the Anastasia palettes I own, which I'm pretty sure I own them all with the exception of Subculture, this is the one that I reach for the most. 
And when this palette did first launch and I was seeing images of it on Instagram and on Twitter and here on um, YouTube, I thought, meh, do I really need this? It looks so similar to other things I already have. But then I very quickly talked myself into it because like many of you, I started seeing beautiful makeup looks appearing using the palette. And I justified it by saying, well, I'm a collector of the ABH palettes. And this palette contains some of my favorite shades from other palettes. The dark brown Cypress Umber, which is in the Modern Renaissance palette. Also Tempera or Tempera. That's one of my all time favorite underbrow eye shades. Orange Soda, Burnt Orange. I mean, it basically contained all of my favorites plus a black. I personally really like to have a black eyeshadow in a palette. I know some people never use black, but I use it a lot, either to darken up the very outer corners of my eye or to use as liner. I just personally like having a black in there. And then the shimmers like Glistening and Fairy and Rose Pink and Sultry and Bronze. I just felt that they were pretty unique shimmers that I didn't own in any other palettes. And if someone were to ask me, Risa, what is your absolute favorite Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palette of all time? I would say soft glam. And now, should I add a drum roll? Um, the number one spot goes to, and this might come as a surprise to some of you, the BH Cosmetics Love in London. And I'll tell you why this is number one. Because it has everything that these other palettes have, that I like about these other palettes, in one. You've got some bold colors, you've got that black, you've got a plum, a neutral brown, a more reddish brown, some amazing transition colors in Big Ben and Cheers and Scone. You've got a beautiful soft shimmer similar to the luscious shade from the Sweet Peach palette right there in Cheeky. I can do a silvery smoky eye like I've mentioned liking to do on occasion. I can use Posh and Tea for that. Lolly is so, so pretty. Prestige, Queen is a gorgeous gold. I mean, the, everything about this palette just calls to me. From the color selection, to the pigmentation, to the blendability, to the price. Let's not forget how affordable this palette is. It's perfect for travel. I mean, this, this was a no-brainer, number one pick. If you do not have this palette, please either click the link that I'm going to provide in the description box or go to your nearest Ulta or wherever you find BH Cosmetics and pick this up. I know a lot of you have purchased this palette on my recommendation and you've told me how much you love it. If for some reason you didn't love it, I'm eager to know why because I truly think it's that good. So yeah, that completes the eyeshadow palette ranking. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of the Risa Does Makeup family. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. Once more, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to me ramble about my favorite eyeshadow palettes, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.